On behalf of the Peninsula Hotel's signature events, it is an honor and privilege to present to you the digital version of the Quail A Motorsports Gathering. Each year, the Quail showcases automotive history as well as latest offerings in future innovations from some of the world's leading car manufacturers. Paired with the unbeatable natural surroundings of Quail Lodge and Golf Club and renowned food and beverage, the Quail is truly a lifestyle event. Although we are unable to gather in person this year, we are proud to celebrate the essence of the show by awarding one vehicle with the Spirit of the Quail Award. Each year, the Quail Motorsports Council chooses an enthusiast car that best represents the true spirit of motoring. The selection includes design, driving experience, performance for its era, engineering innovation, and timelessness. The Motorsports Council for weeks have been reviewing applications, photos, and videos in search of a vehicle that best exemplifies the spirit of the quail. We were overwhelmed with the response and applications received. From veteran entrants to new ones, we heard from you all and for that we thank you. I would like to take this opportunity to now introduce you to Gordon McCall, co-founder of the event and director of the Motorsports Council. He will be sharing our six finalists. We hope you enjoy and thank you for tuning in. Well, Courtney, thank you very much for that kind introduction. It certainly is a thrill to work with you and the entire Peninsula Signature Events team here at the Quail Lodge and Golf Club. Um, this Spirit of the Quail Award is really, really special, and I know you touched on that. Uh, maybe a little bit of background might help with, uh, with how it is that we come about who wins the award. Uh, we've always viewed it as a significant award. It's, um, it's not your ordinary award. It's very subjective and has a lots, of com lots of components to it. So I'm going to read a little bit between the lines. So you explained how it is the criteria that we choose the award, but the between the lines part is really that emotional side. And we all know that anybody that shows a car anywhere in the world, it's an effort. It's a really big effort. For some, it's a bigger effort than others. Uh, but it is an effort and we like to acknowledge that and so the spirit of the quail has a lot to do as much with the person that owns the car as it does with the actual car itself because we love hearing the stories of what it takes to get a car to our show. So that's a little bit of the between the lines backstory. Um, I'd like to fill you in and this might be helpful to uh, as to some of our previous quail winners, our uh, spirit of the quail award winners. Uh, last year we had an amazing Ferrari 335S owned by Cavallino Investments out of Ohio. Uh, it was a huge effort to get that car to our show and as our guests noticed it was a very worthy recipient of the award. Really incredible car. One of our all-time favorites was in 2018 when we awarded the 1979 Tamiya Sand Scorcher which is literally a full-scale model of the Cox 0.49 model that so many of us had as kids. Uh, I hope we've got some great images to share with you on the screen. Uh, that was Dean Lanzani and he shipped that car over from the United Kingdom and it just buckled people's knees. To see that full-scale VW off-road bug with a full-scale remote controller, it was off the charts and we really enjoyed honoring that car. Again, the story that brought that car to our show is what made it so interesting. Uh, we've also had a 1938 Packard 8 model uh, 1601 Cabriolet from the Bob Lee collection. You know, this is a car that you don't really think of uh, in terms of the Quail, a full classic like that. But again, the effort uh, that Ann Brockington Lee went to to get that car to our show, to share it with, uh, with everyone, was really remarkable. So those are just some examples of previous winners, which will bring us to our six finalists for this year's virtual Spirit of the Quail Award. Uh, this was not an easy decision for our Quail Motorsports Council. Let me tell you, there was a lot of thought put into the selection process. Um, it came down to six, which includes Fritz Kaiser's 1968 Lamborghini Miura P400. The 1968 Lamborghini Miura P400 with the number 3586 is the protagonist of the memorable climb to the Great San Bernard Pass in the opening scenes of the famous cult movie of the late 60s, The Italian Job. The car is currently the stage queen of the exhibition Pop Lamborghini, 
at the National French Automotive Museum in Milhouse in France. We at the Kaiser Collection are the current custodian of this important and famous car. It's really a wonderful car and we are very happy to bring this mirror back to the top of the classic car world. Incredibly gorgeous Lamborghini Miura. Uh, Joseph Salvo's 67 911S soft window Targa Porsche. My name is Joseph Salvo and my wife Shella and I own this 1967 Porsche 911S soft window Targa. Some unique features to this car, uh, 1967 was the first year of the S class for Porsche and the 911s. 1967 was also the first year of the Targa top replacing the 356 convertible. Uh, very few were built. This is one of 483. Unique to this car is that it was actually purchased and driven for two years by the first Porsche dealer in Orange County, Chick Iverson. Chick sold it to the gentleman that we were able to purchase it from in August of 2017. We purchased it with all of the documentation, the original paperwork, uh, even the gentleman's finance docs, and it subsequently went through a 24-month nut and bolt frame off restoration by car park in Costa Mesa. Nothing was left untouched. Every part, every nut, every bolt was restored to as original factory condition. And that's the condition that you see it in today. A beautiful car. Uh, Joe Hurwich with a 1949 Alfa Romeo 6C 2500 SS Cabriolet body by Penn and Farina. Hi, I'm glad to present my 1949 Alfa Romeo 6C 2500 Super Sport by Penn and Farina. We're going to take a good look at the interior of the car. You can see the Art Deco uh, and pre-war uh, look of the car. All of the original accoutrements that went along with it. Uh, now I'm going to open the hood on this side. And in here, we'll be able to see the traditional three carburetors that are indicative of the Super Sport model. Walking around the front end again, we'll take a look at the other side of the motor. Here you can see the six cylinders, or six spark plugs, excuse me, and the condition of the interior is really quite nice, uh, interior of the engine compartment. And that's kind of the story of my Alfa Romeo. Uh, this is my fourth Alfa, and it's my favorite ride as of 2020. Thanks for listening to my story. Stunning post-war Alfa Romeo. Barry Conley, in his 1964 Triumph Spitfire, I think pulls everyone's heartstrings. Hello, this is Barry Conley with my 1964 Triumph Spitfire. It was originally bought by my father in 1964, and he raced it extensively in Texas in the mid to late 60s. He kept it all these years uh, because he won the 1967 Terlingua Challenge that Carol Shelby used to put on every year in West Texas. And he also won the 1965 and 1964 uh, championships in Texas, the regional championships. So it was special to him for all these years. He garaged it in 1973. And when he got into his early 80s, he tried to restore it to get her running. And I was still in the Navy at the time, so I would take time off from the Navy and come out and help him. And eventually we got it running, at which point he gave me the car, and that was in 2011. Just a wonderful little Triumph Spitfire that's been in the family since new, and it's uh, just a lovely little car. Joseph Storm with his 1968 Ferrari 365 GT. My name is Joe Storm, and this is my 1968 Ferrari 365 GT. 
There were a total of 801 um, models made during this four-year period, and this represented Ferrari's most successful production vehicle up to that point, and also represented the pinnacle of innovation and engineering. So I found the car in Boston approximately eight years ago, and it was in a fair driver condition. Uh, we brought the car back, and I slowly went through uh, restoring the car uh, from the suspension to redoing the electronics to uh, taking it to a great shop in Northern California, Frank uh, Zuki Restoration, and we took the car down to uh, metal, and we went through it uh, on a concourse level of uh, full body restoration that has taken about five and a half years to complete. It's been a labor of love and a whole lot of fun these past eight years getting the car to this state. Thanks for watching. Beautiful grand touring Ferrari with a wonderful hands-on restoration story behind it. And Anne Brockington Lee, who I just mentioned is a previous Spirit of the Quail winner, uh, with her 1933 Duesenberg SJ. I'm Ann Lee, and this is the 1933 Duesenberg Fishtail Speedster Model SJ by Wayman, chassis number J508. It was commissioned in 1933 by the eccentric millionaire George Wattell of Lake Tahoe and shown that same year at the New York Auto Show. It's had four owners, George Wattell, Bill Howard in 1962, General William Lyon in 1986, and Bob Lee starting in 1995. To me, this is the ultimate in a preservation car because it is 100% original. All of its parts, its paint, chrome, tires, and upholstery, and it's been loving, lovingly cared for, maintained, and driven by each owner. George would tell was an honorary fire marshal in Woodside, California, and this siren was given to him by that fire department. Now, when we show this car at Concours and we go over the ramp to share it with the crowd, this is my favorite part of the car. Stunning black and white, full-blown 30s era roadster that just is incredible. So that's going to bring us up to the winner of this year's Peterson Museum Virtual Car Week, Spirit of the Quail. And that winner is none other than the 1949 Alfa Romeo 6C2500 SS Cabriolet, body by Pin and Farina, and the owner is Joe Hurwich. Joe is an amazing guy and very deserving of this award. Uh, Joe's been showing cars with us for six or seven years. He brings his spirit with him to our show every year, and it's infectious. You know, Joe restored this car out of a complete labor of love. He has sent us file upon file of the restoration process. This car literally went from a series of boxes to the completed car that you see on your screen. Just a stunning post-war Alfa Romeo. We've had, I believe, four best of show Alfa Romeo winners in our 17 year history of our show. Three of those are pre-war. We did have one post-war Alfa, but this, this just epitomizes a sports car for one. Um, the history that Alfa Romeo has is phenomenal. I don't think there's an enthusiast out there that the history of Alfa Romeo doesn't resonate with. I think we're all enthusiasts of the brand. And so Joe, your enthusiasm, your commitment to restoring that car, your commitment to getting that car to us uh, in this uh, virtual show is something that we appreciate and we're rewarding you with the Spirit of the Quail Award. So Joe, congratulations and we look forward to seeing you and all of you at our 2021 Quail Motorsports Gathering next year when we get to do it live in person. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the show. Hi, I'm Joe Hurwich and this is my 1949 Alfa Romeo 6C2500 Super Sport by Pininfarina. Some say there were 70 of these made. Some say there were only 10 or 15. Nobody seems to know. This car was originally sold in 1949 to a toothpaste magnet in Milano. By 1959, it had made its way to New York. Subsequent to that, we lost track of it for a little bit. 
1976, it was sold to an individual in 47 boxes. That person planned on restoring it. 20 years later, he sold it in the same 47 boxes. 20 years later, it was sold in the same 47 boxes to an Eastern European restorer, and I bought it from that restorer in 2018. The original mileage, the mileage on the car when it was uh, restored was 47,000 kilometers. Because of the 40 years in storage, we actually believe that could be the original amount of mileage on this car. Thank you for listening to my case. Here's my 1971-2002 